Welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to talk about these things called degrees, minutes, and seconds. You go, what in the world does that mean? Well, it's a, it's a way that we can measure smaller than one degree. You see, one degree is one 360th of a rotation, or there are 360 degrees in one roll full rotation from an initial side to a terminal side that stops where it starts or terminates where it begins. Um, so if, if we want to get more specific than a degree, we need something to do that. So we need minutes, and to get more specific than minutes, we need seconds, or we can use decimals. And you go, well, why don't we just use decimals? Oftentimes we do, but minutes and seconds are also very common. And so I want to show you how to convert between the minutes and seconds fractions of a degree and decimal portions of that, of that same degree. So I'm going to show you that, what they mean. And basically, that's what I've just explained to you. So minutes and seconds are fractions of one degree. If one revolution is 360 degrees, well, then parts of that degree can be broken up where one degree is equal to 60 minutes. We make a minute like this. It looks almost like a foot notation, if you're familiar with inches and feet. And then one minute has 60 seconds. Now, appreciate how small that is. So one degree is already fairly small. Break that into 60 parts, you're really, really small. Um, break that really small thing into 60 seconds, 60 of the other parts that are equal, that, that's exceptionally small. So degrees, minutes, and seconds give you the ability to measure very, very small units. Um, sometimes we can talk about minutes of angle. If you've ever studied trajectory, uh, minutes of angle is what they're talking about here. This is a minute of angle. Uh, and we would talk about angles being in minutes so that you can be very specific with it. Hardly anybody would say seconds of angle. That is exceptionally small. So minutes and, and, and seconds can give you very, very accurate determinations of whatever angle you're talking about. And so we're going to go ahead, a very, very quick video here, to show you how to change between minutes and seconds of a degree into decimals of degree, and then we're going to go backwards from that in just a little bit. So let's take a look at this. If one degree equals 60 minutes, and 60 minutes, there's so a one minute equals 60 seconds, then we can think about it a little different way too, so that we can translate into degrees. One minute is equal to 1 60th of a degree. Just divide both sides by 60, and you will get 1 60th of a degree equals one minute. Or, one second equals 1 60th of a minute. We'll take both sides divided by 60, you'd get 1 60th of a minute equals one second. But, but wait a second. If, literally, if, uh, if one second is one sixtieth of a minute, and one minute is one sixtieth of a degree, then one second is one sixtieth of, which means multiply, one sixtieth of a degree. It's one sixtieth of a degree squared. So that's one over thirty-six hundredth of a degree. That's a very, very small unit of measurement. And so this is the way that we're going to convert this. So I'm going to show you that with just a couple examples. Um, Obviously, we don't need to convert degrees to degrees, so leave the 61. We're just going to add some decimals to it. And here's how. If we take our minutes and we understand that if one minute is 1 60th of a degree, then 42 minutes is 42 times that 1 60th of a degree. So we can do that. This right here, notice the unit change. This is 42 times one minute. This is 42 times one minute. This is one minute. So just multiply your minutes by 1 60th and put that degree there because you've just changed units. You've just converted. Now how about the seconds? 21 seconds means 21 times 1 60th of a minute or 1 60th of 1 60th of a degree. So we can multiply that way. So 21 seconds is 21 times, well, I'm not just going to do 21 times 1 60th of a minute because I'd have to convert twice. So I want to do 21 is 1 60th of 1 60th of a degree. Remember, we're trying to convert two degrees here. So it doesn't do me a lot of good to leave this in degrees and do this in degrees and then do this in minutes. That doesn't make sense because I have to redo this and either add up my minutes and do it again, or I'd have to convert twice. And so let's make sure that all our units are correct. So degrees, that's, that's great. Degrees are degrees. Minutes, I've multiplied by 1 60th of a degree because one minute is 1 60th of a degree. 
Seconds I've multiplied by 1 60th of 1 60th of a degree. Because 1 second is 1 60th of a minute, and that minute is 1 60th of a degree. So we have a double conversion here. This is what you're going to add up. So I don't really care whether you add it this way and add this 61 plus whatever you get here plus whatever you get here. Or if you want to write it out a little bit differently and say, this becomes, this is kind of the way I prefer because it's a little bit straighter uh, here. 61 degrees plus this portion as a degree. I can easily see that those are both in the correct units. Plus this portion as a degree. And now I have my degrees are degrees, that's cool. My minutes are degrees, that's great. My seconds are now in degrees. Can you see how we're just multiplying by 1 over 60 twice? Um, two times to get this into minutes and then this into degrees, just like we had to multiply this to get into degrees. And I like this because you can put it in your calculator just like it says. And if you do that, you're going to get that this is 61.70583. but now it's in degrees. And that's how we change from this minute and second notation of fractions of a degree into a decimal version of that. Which one's better? It really depends, but notice something that this is, let's see, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousandths of a degree. This might be better notation sometimes because there are no decimals here. You know exactly what to the second you're aiming at. Um, but that's how very, very specific and accurate uh, these minutes and seconds are. They're exceptionally small measurements of, of what that angle is doing. Uh, so they are valuable. Uh, don't throw these out just because maybe we prefer some decimals. Uh, they work very well. Now, some of the, the, uh, the adding and subtracting are a little bit different because, well, we don't, have a, we don't have a base 10. We have a base 60, really. 60 seconds is one minute. 60 minutes is one degree. And so that, that can be a little rougher. But as far as accuracy, that's very accurate. Um, also, notice one other thing. If you ever get more than what that degree is, you've done it wrong. If these are ever more than 60, you can simplify that also. So if you do your conversion, you go, I now have 89 degrees. You go, you probably messed that up a little bit because that is 61 and then a fraction of one little degree there. And that's what that's saying to you. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you understand where this comes from, how I, I've explained from here to here, hopefully pretty well for you. And now I want you to practice one. So um, me personally, I would go straight from here to here, understanding that three minutes is three times one over 60 degrees. And 51 seconds is 51 times one over 60 times one over 60 degrees. Go ahead and try that now and see what you come up with. Okay, hopefully you've taken the time to go ahead and try this on your own. If we're going to convert from degrees, minutes, and seconds into decimals of a degree, we're not converting away from degrees. We're not getting to something called radians, which we're going to talk about in the next video. Very interesting, exceptionally useful, and that's what most of our calculus and, and work in angles deals with, honestly, is, is in terms of radians, because the formulas work a lot better for a lot of the formulas we deal with. Some are, are not even really possible very well in degrees. Um, so when we have this 101 degrees and then three minutes and 51 seconds, 101 degrees is going to appear in your final answer. So why? Because the rest of these are fractions or decimal of one degree. It will never get you above that degree that's listed here if these are less than 60 each. And if they're more than 60, it should be translated first anyway. It's a little bit nicer to work that way. So we say, okay, well, if these are fractions of a degree, I can add those portions of the degree. And the way we do that is we say that our three minutes is 1 60th of a degree. So if we multiply that, we're going to get a decimal for this little part. And 51 seconds is 1 60th of a minute, which is 1 60th of 1 60th of a degree. So we multiply twice, and we should end up with exactly that. Now, I have a mistake on the board. You should see it. Please, please recognize that we are still in degrees, and you need to show it. So 101 degrees, 3 minutes, 51 seconds is 101.0641667 degrees. I hope it makes sense. I hope you're able to get it. What we're going to do now is we're going to go backwards. I'm going to give you a decimal and a degree. I'm going to show you how to translate to minutes and seconds, and then we're going to be done with our video. 
All right, let's go backwards. Let's go from a degree measurement of an angle into minutes and seconds. I, th I think this is a little bit easier um, because you're multiplying by 60 instead of 160th. We're gonna see that bear out in just a bit. One thing I do wanna mention though, is that we should still be able to determine the quadrant in which our angles reside, in which they terminate. So we should still be able to think about this as, hey, 18 degrees, that doesn't make it to 90 yet. That should be in quadrant one. And 29 degrees should be in quadrant one. The previous examples, that 61 degrees and whatever minutes and seconds, that 61 degrees is still in quadrant one, but that 101 degrees that we, we converted a little while ago would have been in quadrant two. That's past 90, but not to 180. So even though it has minutes and seconds, we can still identify the quadrant. Usually you just look at the degree. Uh, the minutes and seconds are parts of one degree, and so you can determine what quadrant that termi terminating side or terminal side lies in. All right, let's get back to it. So if we have 18.255 degrees, how can we translate that into minutes and seconds? Well, by realizing that that 0.255 is just a fraction of one degree. And so we can write it this way. We can say 18.255 degrees is 18 degrees plus 0.255 degrees. Wait a second. One degree is one is 60 minutes. And so how this really works out, you can think of this as this is 0.255 times one degree. It's a true statement. 0.255 times one degree is 0.255 degrees, but that degree is 60 minutes. That one degree is 60 minutes. So if I take my 0.255 and multiply by 60 minutes, which is the same thing as one degree, it's gonna give me the number of minutes I have and then a decimal. In this case, it's 15.3. So this right here, if I take my 0.255 times 60 minutes, this is 18 degrees plus 15.3 minutes. Stick with me, I hope that's making sense. I hope that 18 says, yes, that's my degree, no problem, this is a fraction of a degree. Fractions of degree can be translated into a different type of fraction of degree, minutes and seconds. Let's multiply by the 60 minutes that are in our degree. So I have 15.3 minutes, but wait, the 0.3. Well, this would be 15 full minutes and 0.3 of another minute. We can do the same thing as we can here. So I'm gonna take this down. and say this is 18 degrees, 15 full minutes, and 0.3 of another minute. But that minute has 60 seconds in it. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did here. We can say 0.3 minutes is 0.3 times one minute. That's a true statement. But one minute is 60 seconds. We see it right here, one minute, 60 seconds. And so because 0.3 minutes is 0.3 times one minute, and that one minute has 60 seconds in it, we can take that 0.3 and we can multiply it by 60 seconds and get that trans translation or that transformation um, into, into seconds. So 18 degrees plus 15 minutes plus 0.3 times 60 seconds, 60 seconds in a minute, uh, is 18. And it'll be 18 seconds. And so we can put all, this all together. We can say this is 18 degrees, 15 minutes, and 18 seconds. Now, which way is better? It, it really depends on the context. They mean the same thing. This right here is a very, very accurate and people understand what that is. Decimals, sometimes we, we can't wrap our head around really how accurate that's getting. Um, sometimes the reverse is true. Sometimes we really want a decimal version of that, that degree. So I hope it makes sense on where it's coming from. That's the big part. Understand that 18 degrees is the whole degree and that's a fraction of it. So multiplying by 60 will give you the number of minutes. 
multiplying whatever decimal you have by 60 again will give you the number of seconds. Now this is very convenient for us because 0.3 times 60 was a whole number. If it's not, then you're going to round. We're going to see that in the next example. I want you to try it right now. I want you to break it down. You don't necessarily have to show all of this stuff. What I'd rather you understand is that taking a decimal of a degree is less than one degree, and therefore you can multiply by 60 minutes for that degree and get the number of minutes, 60 seconds for that, the decimal of the minute, and get the number of seconds. Go ahead and try that now. See if you can do it. All right, so we're going to give it a try. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to understand that, that 0 0.411 is less than one degree. It's a fraction of one degree, and it's equal to, because one degree is 60 minutes, it's equal to 0 0.411 times 60 minutes. And so we're going to show that. So 0 0.411 times 60 minutes Well, that is 24.66. So what that means is if there's 60 minutes in one degree and we have 0 0.411 of one degree, then that's going to be 24 minutes, no, 24.66 minutes. Well, that, that's all well and good, but if we're trying to get away from the decimals and into minutes and seconds, this says you have 24 full minutes, but 0.66 of the next minute, and that next minute has 60 seconds in it. So we're going to break that up. We're going to say this is 24 minutes plus 0.66 of the next minute. Notice how it's not just 66 seconds. Notice how 66 seconds would be very inappropriate to write. You can't get above that, otherwise you start counting minutes. Remember that. If you were to actually count on, on a clock here, once you get to 60 seconds, um, you, you don't really go 61, 62. You go, oh, that's one minute and one second. Or, yeah, one minute and one second, or one minute and two seconds, you start counting the next next place value over. And in this case, since we're base 60, you're counting up minutes every time you get to 60 seconds. So that can't be right. What that means is that's a fraction of one minute. But wait a minute, one minute contains 60 seconds. So let's multiply. If that's 0.66 of one minute, and one minute has 60 seconds, and 0.66 times 60 seconds gives us 39.6. 39.6 seconds. Typically, we're going to round this. So in this case, that is more accurate than what we're going to get, because we're going to round this to 40 seconds. And when we put that all together, notice how we're still 29 whole degrees and a fraction of that next degree, but written in terms of minutes and seconds and not just a decimal. And that's about it. That's how we can translate from our minutes and seconds into a decimal version of a degree or in from degrees and with decimals into minutes and seconds. I've explained both of them hopefully pretty well for you. Hopefully you understand uh, how they're, they're used. Uh, sometimes people get really kind of confused with um, minutes and seconds because they don't know where they come from. And now that you do, hopefully it makes more sense to you. So we're, we're done with this now. That's about as far as we need to go. It's just that understanding. And next time we're going to explore something different. So we've explored how one full rotation, sweeping out a full rotation with an angle is 360 degrees. We're going to talk, after we, because we talked about minutes and seconds already, we're going to talk about how we can measure that a different way. We can measure with some angles with something called radians, and it's, it's a completely different thought on where that angle comes from. So I'll see you for that video. It's a really important one. Don't skip it and come prepared to really, really focus on it. All right, have a great day.